Now it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a Christian perspective on the speed of light is astrophysicist Dr. Jess Waring. Welcome back, Jeff. Krista, it's always good to be here. Well, we are at Reasons to Believe, we call ourselves Old Earth Creationists. Right. So that means we accept the conventional scientific age for the universe that the universe is about. What are we at? 13.7 billion years old now? I just go with 14. That always okay. rounded off to 14 rounded to make off. it good. So. All right. Now, one of the ways we know that the universe is this old is this issue of the speed of light and light travel, how, mm -hmm. how long light's been traveling. So let's talk about that, and then we'll get into kind of the connection to our faith. So first of all, talk to us about this whole light travel issue. How does that work? Well, that's one of the interesting things is that light actually has a finite travel speed. So we tend to think of, you know, you turn on the light switch and it's just instantaneously there. But the reality of it is light takes time to travel. And so that means as an astronomer, we're actually seeing things as they happen in the past. So for example, you go out and you look at the sun. It takes about eight to eight and a half minutes for the light to get from the sun to us. It means we're seeing the sun as it appeared eight minutes ago. And we can use that principle, the fact that light takes a long time to travel across the universe, to do various measurements of how old the universe is. And they all kind of come in right about 14 billion years. So when we use the phrase of something is 10 million light years from us, what we're saying is it took the light 10 million years to get here? That's and exactly that we're what we're saying. We're just now yeah. seeing it? Okay. Yeah, so light year is a measure of distance. You know, if I say the sun is 93 million miles away, that's a measure of distance. The Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, means that it takes light 2.5 million years to get from the Andromeda galaxy to us. Okay, so that immediately raises the question in my mind of my friends at church who talk to me about the Earth being only 6,000 years old. If there's objects that have, the light's been taking millions and millions mm -hmm. of years to get here, that seems like kind of a pretty straightforward evidence against the idea of the universe only being six to 10,000 years old. It, it really is the simplest way to look at it. And the reality of it is anything outside of our galaxy is hundreds of thousands of light years away from us. And so there are objects in our galaxy, you know, the closest thing is about four, or the closest star is about four light years away. But there are stars that are tens and, you know, tens, 50, maybe 50,000 light years away. Um, but anything outside of our galaxy, light will have traveled for hundreds of thousands of years to get to the Earth. And that really is a pretty potent evidence that the universe is older than a few thousand years. Now, I'm imagining what a potential answer to that could be is that, well, you know, God can do anything. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe he made light kind of in transit. It was already on its way when mm -hmm. he made those stars. You How know, would you address that? You know, and, and there's some legitimacy to that, you know, because you, know, you could argue that God put those in the heavens so that we could see them. And so he put the beams so that we could see them, even though they're very far away. The problem is, is when you start investigating the details of that. And so, for example, I, I looked for my graduate research, I looked at a particular galaxy that is about 400 million light years away from us. And if the light was just in transit, that would work somewhat, except I see records of events that happen. So the light levels were going up and down, which means there are events happening in that object that is recorded in the light. Now, if the light was created in transit, there's a record of an event that never happened. And so you, if you're not careful how you do that, you end up with God being deceptive. And it's kind of like putting the fossils in the ground so that we think they were there when they really weren't. That, you, you start impinging on the character of God if you push that explanation too hard. And I think that's problematic. Well, what if, what if the speed of light changed over time? Could that be another workaround to this problem? That is one of the, the historically popular workarounds. And there's some evidence, you know, people looked at the measurements of the speed of light and said, well, maybe it could have been faster in the past. And there, there's kind of two really big problems with that. One is that there are measurements we can make of these very distant objects 
where we're actually measuring the speed of light. And so it's, you know, it's coupled in with the fine structure constant, but it's a couple other constants, one of which is the speed of light. And what we can show is that given our best measurements, that value has changed by no more than one part in about 100,000, which would be nowhere near enough of a change to account for the fact that these things are millions of light years away. So there's measurements we can make that say the speed of light hasn't changed. And two, if the speed of light changes, we think, oh, that just means things can get here faster. But the speed of light has lots of other consequences. Uh, you know, if you've got Einstein, E equals mc squared when you convert mass into energy, the, the factor that affects that is the speed of light squared. Well, if the speed of light is much faster, you get a whole lot more energy. Well, the sun uses that principle of converting mass into energy to power itself. So if the speed of light were a million times faster, our sun would be a trillion times brighter. Oh, that and could so, be a problem. Yeah, that's problematic. Uh, it'll get really toasty here. <laughs> So what you're saying is when you just change one thing, it has a network effect. It, it changes a lot of things. It really does, and especially when you're talking about the speed of light, because that's one of those foundational things, even when we understand how the understand how we understand the universe working, is that everybody measures the same speed of light. And so if you change that, that has huge ramifications for how we understand the universe. So let's quickly wrap it up and talk to us about what's going to happen if I try to put forth the idea to a non-Christian that the speed of light has changed over time. Is that going to help me in my outreach? Uh, you're certainly going to put up some things that are you're going to have to work through quite extensively before you can get to any discussion of the gospel, which is kind of one of the things you're going to want to have that conversation about. And so in, in some sense, I think you can argue just by arguing for a speed of light changing, you're putting in an unnecessary obstacle to talking about that. But a lot of what you're going to get is people going, you know, we, we see that the speed of light is constant. We, we find great evidence for that. If you change it, it's very different. And you're going to, you're going to have this very detailed, technical, scientifically hard conversation that's going to distract you from how do you love this person and how you share the gospel with them. And so I think it's just easier to say, you know, really the speed of light is constant and that fits with what scripture has to say because God upholds creation pretty reliably so that the laws of physics looks constant. I would expect the speed of light to be constant. Very good. Well, thanks for helping us think that through. And I want to encourage you to check out Jeff's blog, Impact Events.